Step two, torque by sequence to 22 foot pounds. Pins the turbo motor and full time four wheel drive dual range. We're gonna install our timing system here. What we have is our crank pulley, cam pulleys, tensioner and tensioner pulley, idler pulley, idler pulley, crank sprocket. You see there's a keyway on there. This line right here, that's our mark. It's gonna line up with the cam sensor. The keyway, when the keyway is down, the cylinders are all in their center bore when this line is there. That's what we use to align our crank for the uh, timing belts. Get on there. Just like that. See what we have? See those positions around there? That's what our cam sensor is going to read. Uh, generally left to right is referring to sitting from the driver's orientation from the car. So if you're standing behind the engine and looking forward, this would be the left side. See, we don't have those reluctors on there. So this is the right side here. Make sure you double check that if you get confused. Because obviously these hash marks go to right against this cam sensor the same way as these hash marks right against this crank sensor. Now we are going to put our sprocket idler pulley on the bottom near the oil pump. Between the oil pump and the water pump. So that's the only tooth one we have there. Then we also have an idler here. And then we have one more. The depth is a little different, which goes on the bottom. And we'll just uh, thread these on. We'll torque them down after our belt's on. Turn them on enough that they're straight. Now, we have one more pulley that's going to go here, which is our tensioner pulley. But we're going to find that it's going to be easiest to install last after our belt is on when we install the tensioner. We'll throw our belt over the crank. Just let it hang there, it's fine. Line up the little woodruff key. Careful not to booger that up. A lot of times you're going to find these engines with the boogered up keyway because somebody had this crank pulley off and didn't get the torque right. They walked away, ate up the snub, and therefore trashed the whole engine because you can't put a pulley on it. And the only way to correct that is to replace the crankshaft or do some clever tricks, whatever is your fancy. All right, so we know that our woodruff key is pointing down. And we can see from behind the pulley that our hash mark is lined up with the crank angle sensor. This, these pulleys, you're going to have a uh, hash mark on the outside of the pulley, very near where this black dot is. You got one here, you got one there. Now as you can see, you have some arrows. Pay no mind to those arrows. If you try to go by those arrows, you're going to have it all wrong. You want to go by the little hash mark on the edge of the wheel there. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our cams and point our notch up. There's one. And then once again we're going to turn our cam up. Now this one's going to be sprung under tension. So this one's kind of a pain in the ass. You're just going to have to let it kind of balance there. So there it is. But if it moves one way it's going to snap one way or the other, so you gotta be patient with that, but if you can get it to balance right there, we can get this belt on. Now if you take a close enough look at this belt, you're gonna find a series of marks on it. There's one. There's one with dots. And there's one. Now if you notice there's a direction of the arrows, the belt goes on this way. If you put it on this way, it's backwards because it goes with the rotation of the engine. So this uh, dotted line is going to line up with our mark on the cam sensor with our hash mark on the top of the cog there. So we want to get our belt on there like this. It's li lined up with that notch. And then from this side of the, en the engine, we're going to take our belt. We're going to go under this idler, over the cam. Look, our, our line fits right on. You see that? 
Take our belt around the bottom, over this guy, under this guy, around the water pump, and then from here, this is the part where we gotta be careful because we wanna keep some kind of tension on here where this is not gonna pop off, so we'll just hold that down. The other trick is getting this belt to wrap around this cam without slipping so that our belt is in line with that notch. As you can see, we're a notch off, so let's get that on there a little more. Right there. Now we got our belts lined up, our cam dot lined up, everything's tight, pull the slack out of the belt. Then we can put this guy in. This is our tensioner pulley. We gotta put the tensioner in, but at least this with it being in there, we'll keep our belt where we want it to stay. This thing's what our tensioner is gonna ride against. All right, so before we go any further, we need to get our tensioner prepared. All right, what we're gonna need is something reliable to stick through there that we're gonna be able to pull out. Something that's stiff enough, or something that's not gonna break and get stuck. Okay, this is our tensioner. We're gonna squeeze this guy down into this vise in order to get these holes to line up, drive this pin through it, and uh, so we can install it with our engine. When we pull that pin out, this piston comes out and squeezes against our tensioner pulley, which holds our belt tightly in place, and then we're ready to go. So what we want to do is squeeze this down in the vise. We're fairly simple, but not as simple as it sounds because you can't just cram this thing up at once. You gotta kinda ease on it. Get a little pressure. Ideally, to squeeze this down, you wanna do it over the span of several minutes. Get a little pressure on it. Let the piston soak it up. A Little bit of pressure on it. Let the piston soak it up. If you can see on my bar here, I'll show you how much I'm turning this, just to give you an idea if you can feel it through your eyeballs. You know, just about that much. Let it rest for a few seconds. A little more. But not much more. I mean, you can't really just reef on this thing because you don't want to blow this out. If you blow this thing out, then your timing belt's no good because it's not going to stay tight. Then you might throw your belt. Um, if you're really anal about it, you can buy a new one of these at the dealer. Now, if our hole's not lined up, we can just kind of turn that a little bit. A little squeeze on there. All right. Can I get a little more squeeze out of you there? I think that'll work. Yeah? Check it out. I mean, the main thing is, is that's staying where it needs to be, and then I got enough to pull onto to pull it out. Well, I we think go. we're good. Now, we want to get our little uh, tensioner nugget in there. Stick that in there. If you notice, this is slotted. It gives us some room to move, because we're going to want that little bit of maneuverability. Here we find our little bolts. All right, we now have our little tensioner log in there, log style as it'll be called. I think the other one's called the flapper style. Uh, it's a little greasy spotting down there. So we want to get this pulley in here. And where that's going to ride up on there and ride up on our belt and get our bolts in there. Now this is a little tricky to guide because you're going to have a little bit of tension to fuck with with this belt. But here I got it. Much easier to do on a stand than in the car. All right, let me spin that in. Now that we have that in there, we know our belt's not going to go anywhere. So we can go ahead and start torquing up our pulleys. Just like that. Do our cams. We don't want too much on there. Just, Just enough. All right, what about the, uh, these guys? I'm gonna torque those up by hand. Those don't require insanely huge amounts of He-Man torque. These are gonna be essentially hand tight and then a quarter turn. So that's snug. Oh. This fucking engine's moving on. <laughs> About an eighth of a turn. Same again for this one. Eighth of turn, in here. Eighth of turn. And uh, finally this one. 
All right, now our pulleys are there. Turn all the slack out of our belts, make sure they're all tight. Make sure we got room here. I never now, if we want maximum tension on our log, we can uh, try to wedge it over. I'll get some behind it here. Because those are slotted holes. So if we kind of push it over here first, tighten it down, takes the slack out of that piston to where it's going to be tight on our pulley. That piston is actually going to act like a suspension for the belt as it lashes every time the cams rotate. It'll kind of act as a shock absorber to the belt. So here we go. All right, I'm going to pull the pin. Ooh. You see that? That was cool. Now you see I push this log forward before I tighten it down so that piston doesn't hyperextend and lose tension. Yeah, nice. Look at that. So that timing belt's on. Look at that, folks. 